When the Dragon Prince premiered back in September 2018, I was skeptical that it could be anywhere near as good as Avatar The Last Airbender, but it has not disappointed. Yes, it took some time to get on its feet. Season 1 had some rough edges, and the decision to use a lower frame rate turned a lot of Avatar fans off instantly. But in Season 2, and especially in Season 3, the show found its footing. It changed its frame rate, and as importantly, it doubled down on the nuanced characterization and fascinating exploration of moral ambiguity that made Avatar The Last Airbender one of the greatest shows of the 2000s, animated or otherwise. As The Dragon Prince did so, it made some evocative, poignant, and lyrical episodes of television. Those are what we are going to look at today. But before we get into that, let's discuss some reasons why so many episodes of the show are as intriguing as they are. In Rayla and Callum, the show found a romance that is genuinely engaging. The show makes you want these two to get together because they make each other better, more complete people. As such, when they do get together, it is very satisfying. It's a little awkward and clumsy because they're a little awkward and clumsy because they're just teenagers trying to find their way in the world. Even more impressively, when they finally do establish a romantic relationship, the show doesn't just say, that's the end, and stop developing the relationship. They can have disagreements without those disagreements shattering their relationship, and they can also be playful, such as when they declare that the world isn't ready for their forbidden love. Considering that elves and humans despise each other, an interspecies relationship like this is a big deal. But that tension is diffused somewhat in the minds of Rayla and Callum by the playful displays of affection they share. However, a major reason why their relationship is so interesting in the first place is that they constantly have to struggle through tough situations that have no easy answers. The Dragon Prince, like a lot of art these days, knows that moral ambiguity is a good thing, but unlike a lot of art these days, it actually knows how to implement that moral ambiguity. Things cannot be easily resolved. A war has been raging for a long time between humans and elves. Harrow killed the dragon Thunder because Thunder killed Sarai, his wife. Humans developed dark magic because, as non-magical creatures, they were at a disadvantage against the elves. It's complicated, and it's meant to be. If there is a singular antagonist in this show, it is not Erevas, fascinating and enigmatic as he may be, it is the cycle of violence. However, what puts this show above many of its contemporaries is that it does not just demonstrate why that cycle is bad, it demonstrates why that cycle exists in the first place. But that is enough rambling for now. Let's get to discussing the best episodes of this show. For fairness's sake, I'm going to pick one from every season of The Dragon Prince. So, from season one, we have... Episode two, What is Done. If there is one element of this episode that I remember above all others, it is Rayla's interactions with Callum and Ezrin. Rayla is still very insecure at this point. There are signs of the person she will eventually become, but right now, they are barely poking out of the shell she forces upon herself. Secretly, she cares about humans, but she does not allow that care and compassion to show. For her, the mission to kill Ezrin is not just about vengeance, it's also about justice. It's about her redeeming not only herself, but also her parents, whom she at this point believes are cowards and traitors because they put their lives above protecting what is right for all of Zadia. So she wants to do the opposite. She wants to do what she believes is her duty, even though it's not something she has any personal desire to do. But then she discovers things are not as she thought they were. 
For one, Callum pretends to be Ezrin, and to his credit, he does not hesitate. This is a beautiful scene demonstrating just how much Callum cares about his brother. Here he is, someone who has no real reason to trust elves, and he's confronted by an elf who has every intention of killing him, and instead of freaking out or selling his brother out, he pretends to be his brother. He performs that act of self-sacrifice. Just by doing this, he breaks down Rayla's idea of what humans are supposed to be. Though he is weak physically, he is relentlessly determined and committed. He is not conniving, and he is not manipulative. But this is not what catches Rayla's attention. No, what convinces her to abandon her plan to kill Ezrin is the dragon egg. It was supposed to have been destroyed, but there it is. It is the living embodiment of the truth. That humans are not as evil as she thought, and that peace is still possible between humans and elves. Now, if no part of her wanted this peace, she would disregard the egg and continue her efforts to kill Ezrin. But she has been waiting for something like this. She has been waiting for a license to leave behind the identity foisted upon her and go on her own path. It's an opportunity for a new life. Rayla is a confused person in search of an identity. At the start of the series, she thinks she knows that identity. She will become her parents' redeemer, and as such, she will become well-regarded in the eyes of elven society. But when she discovers the egg still exists, she realizes her true plan as though it had been told to her by some divine being. That plan being that she can bridge the divide between humans and elves. From Season 2, Episode 9, Breathe. So much happens here. Viren is arrested, plunging him into the abject desperation that will characterize him into Season 3. At this point, his pragmatism has given way to his obsession with Erevas, aka his little bug pal. To call Erevas a corrupting influence on Viren is not quite right, as Viren was a morally dubious individual in the first place, and indeed his lust for power and control, combined with the self-loathing beneath that lust, is what made him vulnerable to Erevas in the first place. But that does not mean it's not depressing to watch him lose touch with reality because of Erevas. Even without knowing what is going to happen to him in Season 3, Viren's imprisonment is a big moment. It's the kind where you know, even as you're watching the episode, that it is going to send shockwaves throughout the entire show. The same is true of Ezrin's decision to leave Rayla and Callum and take his seat on the throne of Catalus. This was actually the result of a rewrite. The original plan was to have him go with Rayla and Callum into Zadia. But the more time the writers spent mulling over that decision, they decided that it was not the decision Ezrin would make. There's a real lesson to be learned from this. If your character's organic evolution does not coincide with your overall plan for the series, you change the overall plan. You don't force your characters to do things that are unnatural to the people they have become just because them doing those things fits your overall vision. If the writers of Game of Thrones had taken that to heart, season 8 of that show would not have been such a complete disaster. The scene where Ezrin leaves is heartbreaking, but it is also a milestone. It means he is growing up and at least trying to become an adult. He may have a lot to learn about being king, as demonstrated by how completely Viren outplays him in Season 3, but his commitment and resolve are there. 
Even though he knows he's not ready, he also knows that his people need a king, and he is willing to place their needs over his own desires. But no discussion of this episode would be complete without mentioning the moment where Rayla very nearly admits her feelings for Callum. And Callum discovers that he can use primal magic. Callum does not have a pleasant go of things in Season 2. He feels like he is useless without magic, and this leads to him dabbling in dark magic, even though he believes it's wrong. This drives a wedge between him and Rayla, but they manage to reconcile. They care about each other deeply, as this episode demonstrates, even though the moment when he wakes up and she becomes embarrassed is played for laughs, the scene as a whole is played for drama and it is quite affecting. It is probably the best season finale this show has thus far offered. That said, my favorite episode of The Dragon Prince is... my pick for the best episode of season 3. Number 306. Thunderfall. There is not a lot of Rayla and Callum in this episode. In fact, all our main characters play only supporting roles here. The Dragon Prince uses a lot of flashbacks, which would be annoying and momentum destroying, except for the fact that it uses those flashbacks extremely well. And no episode of the show uses flashbacks quite as well as this one which demonstrates the moment where King Harrow killed the Dragon Thunder, or Avizandium. He did this with the help of Viren, but let's not sugarcoat this, he still did choose to do it. And because of this, he ignited the war between humans and elves. The Avatar episode this is most like is episode 306 of that show, The Avatar and the Fire Lord, now, I know that's high praise, but I'll try to explain why I consider these episodes to be rough equivalents, and it's not just because they're both very artfully constructed flashback episodes, although that is certainly part of it. Both episodes are about the reason a war is happening. For Avatar, it is the Hundred Year War. For the Dragon Prince, it is the war between humans and elves. Both episodes center on two adult men who are very close and have been so for a long time. For Avatar The Last Airbender, it is Roku and Sozin. For The Dragon Prince, it is Harrow and Viren. Both episodes implicate the ostensibly heroic character, and both episodes explain the heroic character's questionable behavior in the context of his love for someone else. Harrow loved Sarai deeply, so he wants revenge on her murderer, and Roku loved Sozin too much to see him for who he truly was. But while these similarities are important, it is two final similarities that are most integral to understanding the validity of this comparison. Number one, both episodes dig into the messy details of why these wars happened, and the results are much more morally ambiguous than anyone would like to admit. As importantly, both episodes present the major themes of the show very overtly, although they do so in a way that is not really didactic or preachy. For Avatar, it is about righting the mistakes of the past, as well as believing that no one is beyond saving. For the Dragon Prince, it is even more overt. It's about stopping the cycle of violence, but it is also about how that cycle of violence makes judging any situation very difficult. Because even actions that are ostensibly good may have bad consequences, and even actions that are ostensibly chilling can be thought of as quite understandable in the context of the sorrows and traumas people have suffered. The Dragon Prince does not hold our hands. It drops us into the real emotions of Callum and all the difficult 
consequences of Harrow's actions. Callum doesn't know how to react. He sees Avizandium still there, only made stone by Harrow's attack, and he doesn't know what to think. Should he be happy? Should he be satisfied? Should he be miserable? Should he be all these things? He doesn't know. And the show does not suggest that there's only one right way to feel about these things. In fact, it suggests quite the opposite. That only thinking that someone could feel one way about these things is severely limiting one's idea of what people are capable of feeling and just the multiplicity of human emotions. That is why this episode hits as effectively as it does. It challenges us without ever lecturing us. As the Dragon Prince proceeds into Season 4, so long as Netflix does not cancel it, I dearly hope we get more episodes like Thunderfall. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can, and you want to see more content like this. Keep watching The Dragon Prince. It is a brilliant show, and a truly nuanced one, and it is only getting better and more complicated, and it's only strengthening its moral argument as it goes along. It's truly becoming at least as fascinating of a show to think about as Avatar was, and that is only a good sign. So tune in soon for the next analysis. It'll be coming in about a week or so, maybe a little less, depending on my schedule. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.